Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I thought I'd show you how I made this fun bridge card. And if you haven't made one of these before, you're going to love this. It's really easy. It's really fun to make. So let's go ahead and get started. For the focal point on the card, we're going to be using these hearts. This is the outside in stitched heart stackables. And we're going to take that second largest one. And then we're going to be using the lacy heart stackables. Again, the second largest one. I'm using Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock, and I'm going to die cut these. I'm going to die cut one of the lacy border heart and three of the other. And that also has a beautiful stitched edge all the way around it. So now I want to create a little tree border. This is the forest border die set here. And I'm just going to place that about three quarters of the way up this little heart here. And then for the other one, I'm going to create the border that's going to be for the ice in our little scene. And I just want to make sure I selected the border that matches that forest border set. And this is the stitched hillside border die set. I'm going to go ahead and run that through my die cutting machine. And then I want to figure out where I need that icy border to sit. So I'm going to just place this here temporarily. Just move my machine out of the way here. And I'm just going to line these two up and determine exactly where I need that little border to be. So I'm just finding where those two line up together. And then I'm just going to move that forest border right out of the way there. I'll tape this down with a little bit of purple tape. And then I'll run this through my die cutting machine as well. So now you can see that that, that heart there is for our sky. And then we have the little forest border there. And then the ice. So this will all stack up really nicely to create our scene. So I'm going to be using my sponge daubers. And I'll list the information for those that little dauber set down below. And I'm going to be using sponge sugar to start off for the sky. Just want to figure about where I need my sky to begin. And so I'm going to apply that sponge sugar all over this panel here at the top. And then I'm using worn lipstick to create a little shadow here along that border. And then I'm going back to the sponge sugar applicator without applying any extra ink and blending those together. Now I'm going to create a little bit more of a shadow here and blend again. So continue blending that until you get the look that you're going for. Now I'm using my Distress Ink. This is the Speckled Egg. And I'm going to use these blending tools. These are the Detail Blending Tools from Ranger. And they have a nice little sponge dauber on each end. And the reason I'm doing this is I just want a little bit of a shadow around the ice here. Not a lot. I could have used my sponge dauber, but I thought this might just give me a little bit lighter touch here. So I'm going to blend that color all the way around. And now you can see that up close. So I'm using evergreen bow and pine needles. These are the distress oxide inks and my little a dauber here and I'm going to apply the evergreen bow on these little trees and I don't need to worry about the area below it because that's going to get covered by our little icy border. So I'm going to go ahead and cover this with the lighter color Then I'm coming in with the pine needles and I'm going to apply that towards the bottom of these trees. I'm going to flip that dauber over and blend that together. So I'll have a little shadow down towards the bottom of the trees. And I'm just cutting off that end one there. It was just kind of a half of a half a tree. And I don't know, it's just bothering me. So I just cut that off. So now I'm just going to blend this out one more time. And you can see you get a nice little shadow there. Now to clean these daubers off, since I don't have a lot of them, I do want to keep these clean. I'm using a baby wipe and I'm just blotting it up and down on the baby wipe till it goes clean. So I can reuse these again for any color. Now using my glue tube, I'm going to go ahead and glue the sky heart onto our little lacy heart here. And then I'm going to 
let that dry while I apply some glue to the forest border. And I do want to make sure I put a little glue on each of those trees because they're very delicate there. Just to make sure they lie nice and flat. And then while that's drying, I'll put some glue on our little icy border here, our little pond. Now I'm going to go to my stamps here and I want those two little mice up at the top. And this is the Mice on Ice stamp set from Lawn Fawn and it has coordinating dies as well. So again I'm going to ink these up using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink and I'm going to stamp those. Again I'm using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. And using Platinum Brown, Light Carmine, Turquoise Green and Sugared Almond Pink and my blender pen, I'm going to do my coloring. And these are the Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens, and these are a water based marker that have a fine detailer tip on them. So they're great for coloring in these little tiny images like this. And I'm just going to color in the scarf using a little bit of shadow here on either side. I'm only using the one color for each of these little items here. I'm not going to use multiple colors because they're so tiny that I just wanted to quickly color these in. And for this one here, I'm using a little pink for the scarf. Now I'm using the Platinum Brown to do the uh, coloring for the little mouse. And this is a newer color for me, so do keep in mind that you can buy the zigs in sets, but you can also buy them individually. So I've been adding a few new colors to my collection here and there, and this is one of the new colors that I bought. And it's really pretty. It's kind of a gray-brown color, and it looks really good on these little tiny mice. So I'm going to just add the shadow down towards the bottom of the mouse here and then pull that up. And then I did decide to add the light gray for the center here on his little tummy and on the skates as well. And for this other one, I'm using the light carmine to do the skates. So now I'm going to grab the coordinating dies, tape those down with a little bit of purple tape, and run those through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. So now that those are all set, I can go ahead and attach those to my scene, and I'm going to use a little bit of Scotch foam mounting tape to pop those up a little bit. And I'm just going to attach those. So now you can see that you get a lot of dimension here. I just think this is so cute, so fun. It would make a great little ornament too as well if you added a little ribbon to that. For paper here, I'm going to be using the Let It Shine Petite Paper Pack from Lawn Fawn. And we're going to use that kind of aqua blue color here. One has a beautiful gold speckle on it and the other one is the stripe. These papers are just so pretty. So now I'm going to grab that largest die from the outside in stitch rectangle stackables dies and I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine. And I die cut both of those and they'll have that beautiful stitch border all the way around the edge. So I want to create the card base. So the panels we have cut are four inches by five and a quarter. So just slightly smaller than a standard A2 size card. So for the card, I'm going to cut the paper at 4 inches by 10 and a half inches. So that'll fit that panel exactly once it's folded. So I'm going to score at 5 and a quarter. And again, that'll give us a 4 inch by 5 and a quarter inch card. So once that's done, I need to cut the areas for my little bridge card. So I'm going to determine about where I want that heart to be and then we're going to cut two strips here. So I want to place this in my Fiskars cutter at the one inch mark and I'm going to cut 
from the bottom up to that score line. And you can see the score line there. And I, you can also see where the blade is on my trimmer. It's where that little arrow is. So I'm going to stop right at the five and a quarter inch mark. And then I'm going to flip my cardstock over. And I'm going to do the same exact thing here. So I'm starting at the five and a quarter and cutting all the way down. Now I want to get that center piece out of here. So I'm just going to place my trimmer, my blade at the one inch mark, right on that score line, and then cut to the three inch mark. And that'll cut that little panel right out of the center there. And we, we don't need that piece for anything here. So I'm going to go ahead and fold these. And I'm using my bone folder just to press out the crease. Just make sure you line it up really well here and press that out. And now you can see that panel is going to fit right inside the card. And for the front of the card, we're going to use the stripes. So I want to cut these to that same one inch width. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to line that up at the one inch mark. And then I'm going to cut that. And that's going to give us a stitched edge on the top and the right hand side. Then I want to flip this over and do that same cut again at the one inch mark. So those two panels will fit on either side of our card. So again, you want to keep the stitched lines on the top and bottom and on the left and right side. That'll give us a nice finished look. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my glue tube and apply some glue to this panel. I'm gonna place that on the inside of the card. Then I'm gonna grab the, my bone folder. This is the We Are Memory Keepers bone folder and it's a really nice long bone folder that I love to use when I'm just pressing out these big panels. Just gives you a really nice, easy way to press that panel down. Now I want to also place the two little strips, the striped uh, little strips of paper here on the front of my card. So I'm going to go ahead and apply some glue to each of those. Again, making sure this, the stitched edge is along the top and the bottom and the left side here. And then I'm going to do that same thing for the other side, again, making sure the stitched edge is at the top, bottom, and right side of the other panel. And I am making sure that I have glue right up to the edges. I want to make sure that it lies nice and flat here. So I'm going to just press that out again with my bone folder. Make sure that's attached really well. Now this little heart is going to sit right about here on the front of my card and that's going to be the bridge that holds these two panels together. So I'm going to use the glass media mat there to line this up. So I'll bring this down a little bit more so you can see it better here. So I'm centering the heart on that line there and the point of the heart on the line at the top. And then I'm just going to draw a little pencil line here just so that I know where to put the glue. So I'm going to put a little bit of a line here and on the other side. And then I'm just going to place glue on either side of that line. And then I'm just going to use my finger just to bring that out to the edges a little bit. Now I can position that right back down in place here. Just making sure my card is lined up nice and straight. Again, I'm using that glass media mat just to make sure everything is lined up nice and straight. And then I'm just going to follow those pencil lines and attach those two little panels. Now once I had that done, I realized that I wanted an, another heart to cover the inside there. So I die cut one more of the lacy hearts out of that same Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. And I'm going to attach that on the inside of the card just to finish that off a little bit. And I am going to put a little glue on all of those little scallops just to make sure that it lays nice and flat here. And I'm going to attach that. Just spend a little time here to make sure you line it up. 
So now we have that bridge. Now I'm going to create another bridge for the bottom portion of the card, and that's going to be the sentiment that says, have a joyful winter. So I'm going back to that same Mice on Ice stamp set we used before, and I'm going to be using the Everyday Sentiment Banner dies, and I'm using that mi middle size one for the uh, aqua blue paper, and I'm using the smallest one to do the sentiment. So I'm going to grab the sentiment here. It's in three sections, but we're going to line it up as one long stamp. So I'm just going to butt these up right against each other here and make sure that I use my Misty to line everything up. That's the great thing about Misty is you have this great grid line there. So you can make sure that it's lined up nice and straight. And then I'm going to place a piece of cardstock in here. And I'm going to go ahead and ink up this stamp using the VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I am going to stamp this a couple of times, and I did need to move that paper down just a little bit just to make sure that I got it enough of it so we can die cut that. And then I'm going to ink that up again, and so we'll have a nice black crisp image here. So now I'm going to use that smallest banner die to die cut this piece. And I'm going to tape that down with a little bit of purple tape. And then I'll go ahead and run both of these banners through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. I'm going to apply a little bit of ink around the edges of the sentiment here. So I'm going back to my Worn Lipstick Distress Oxide ink, and I'm just going to apply that all the way around. So now I can glue these two together. And this is going to create the second little bridge for the front of our card here. And now when I place that here, I want to center it and I'm going to again flip the card over open so that I can put a little pencil line. I'm going to try to tuck the pencil line up underneath there just so it won't show. Um, now you could add a second uh, banner to the inside like we did with the heart, but I'm not going to worry about that here. I thought it looked fine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the front of the card. And I'm just placing glue from that pencil line, not all the way to the edge because that banner does hang off the card a little bit. Now that banner now makes this card about four and a quarter inches wide. So that would be a standard width. The card height is still five and a quarter. So it's a little bit smaller than an A2 size card. So you can see you have that beautiful uh, paper here. I just love these papers and that one in the back has a beautiful gold sparkle to it. So now you could sign up underneath the heart there, or you could add another sentiment if you wanted to. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. As always, thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.